By the authority given in the statutes of the Open University, I declare this congregation open for the conferment of degrees and the presentation of graduates. Distinguished guests, graduates, and friends of the university, it's my great privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to the 11th of the Open University's degree ceremonies being held this year. I'm confident that this will be one of the most wonderful and I hope inspiring days of your lives. It's also my great pleasure to welcome our honorary graduates, Miss Emily Blackdewala and Mrs. Lopa Patel. We're delighted to be able to honor them today and we'll hear more about their achievements later on. With that in mind, why don't we briefly prepare for our ceremony by asking our graduates to stand and give all of our graduates a round of applause. Thank you very much. That's, that's very good. I'd like it to be a little bit louder later on, <laughs> but that's a pretty good start. Let me tell you a little bit about the Open University and our, our graduation ceremonies. This year, we've awarded over 20,000 qualifications. They range from certificates of higher education to Doctor of Philosophy. And throughout this year, more than 8,000 graduates are being presented in person with their qualifications at ceremonies such as this one today, in London. They're also being held in 12 different towns and cities throughout England, and also in Belfast, Cardiff, Edinburgh, and Dublin. And that goes to show the extraordinary scale and reach of the Open University. I'm sure it goes without saying that today is a very important occasion in the life of all of you, our graduates, your families, and loved ones, and well as, as well as the university staff, all right? I'm sure you'll feel have nurtured and supported, for you, supported you. Now, you could be forgiven for thinking that the occasion is so important that it needs to be solemn, but you'd be quite wrong because in every sense, this is a day of absolute celebration. So I'll be very disappointed if anyone crosses the stage today to anything less than that thunderous applause, or indeed ways in which you might choose to celebrate yourself and your own enthusiasm, and the video you saw earlier may have given you a few, a, few, a few clues. So when that moment arrives, for friends and family, as your special graduate steps forward, please feel free to clap and cheer as loudly as you like. In fact, some families seem to enter into a competition almost to see <laughs> how, much they can, how much they can applaud. And that's particularly true of, true of children uh, I know that it's a school day, but are, are there any children in the house? Are there any children in the house? Okay, so I think it can be very helpful if you haven't managed to spot where your family is. Could the children all please stand? 
and just wave to their parents so everyone knows where they are. And thank you, children, for being so supportive to your mums and, mum, mums and dads over the, over the last many years. So do remember that little competition amongst the families. Now, graduates, as you come across the stage, as you can see, there are, there are many of you, and you'll be moving across quite, quite quickly, so I, I won't have time to stop and have a chat with everyone. But if there's something that you'd like to tell me, if there's a little bit of biographical information or something that you'd like the university to know, do please stop and uh, briefly tell me about it. I've had some extraordinary things in the past. I've had people who are 18, I've had people in their 80s, people with a range of disabilities, someone who told me she'd flown in from Malawi that day in order to come and collect her, collect her to degree, someone who said that she'd had three children during the course of her, of, of her studies. So if there's a little bit like that that you want to tell me, that you might want the whole hall to know about, just let me know about it. So let me explain how the ceremony is going to go. It will begin with the presentation of the graduates who've gained higher degrees and who are able to attend today. And they'll be presented by Mr. Matthew Staples. He's a staff tutor in our Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. And we'll then see the awarding of the honorary degree of Doctor of the University to Emily Blackdewala and Dr. Victoria Pearson, senior lecturer in the Faculty of Science, Technology, Engineering and Maths will present her. And then she'll come up and sign the honorary graduates book and she'll then make her reply. Then we'll continue our presentation of those graduates who've gained Bachelors of Arts, Bachelors of Engineering, and Bachelor of Laws degrees. And next we'll have the second honorary degree of Doctor of the University to Lopa Patel and Karen Keir, who's a, a senior lecturer also in the Faculty of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Maths. We'll present Mrs. Patel, who will also sign and then reply. And then we'll continue to our, our last section of graduates, those who've gained Bachelor of Science degrees, Foundation degrees, and Diplomas of Higher Education. And then I'll conclude the ceremony with a personal address to the successful graduates. I now call upon Mr. Staples to present the graduates. Vice-Chancellor, I shall now present graduates who have gained higher degrees and have been able to attend here today. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, I present to you for a thesis entitled Applications of Proton Transfer, Reaction Mass and Selected Ion Flow Tube Mass Spectrometry in Health Monitoring Celia Lorenko. <laughs> and for a thesis entitled Ganglion and Layer Specific Axon Targeting in the Developing Visual System of Drosophila, Nana Shimasako. For the degree of Doctor in Education, I present to you for a thesis entitled Developing Teacher Educators in Uganda Using a Mentoring Approach, a Case Study. Pauline Elaine Lysett Jones. I present to you, for the degree of Master of Arts in Education, Karina Newman. <laughs> for the degree of Master of Arts in History, I present John Rochester.
For the degree of Master of Business Administration with distinction, I present Gillian Hannon. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, I present Anastasia Domke. <laughs> Colin Gentleman. <laughs> Alexander Masek. Lauren Michalos. <laughs> Julia Stone. <laughs> Maria Teletsina. For the degree of Master of Science in Development Management, I present Gillian Wilcox. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Mathematics, I present John Sola. Vice-Chancellor, colleagues, graduates and guests. Emily Lakdawala is an internationally admired science communicator and educator, passionate about advancing public understanding of space and sharing the wonder of scientific discovery. Emily originally studied geology at Amherst College, Massachusetts, and became interested in the geology of other planets while working as a classroom teacher. During her graduate studies at Brown University, she discovered the vast archive of NASA images, huge numbers of incredible photographs of the solar system, which had barely been seen. As a consequence, she became interested in public engagement and education. In 2001, Emily joined the Planetary Society, a major non-profit research, outreach and advocacy body based in Los Angeles. Initially, she worked on the Red Rover Goes to Mars project, involving high school students on exercises associated with the rover exploration projects. Additionally, Emily was an occasional blogger for the Planetary Society, and in 2005, she was asked to blog about the Cosmos One solar sail mission. Though the mission itself was a failure, the blog became a tremendous success. Emily subsequently tracked the spacecraft Cassini, studying Saturn and its rings as well as the ongoing rover exploration of Mars. Her lucid, accessible and engaging style won her a huge following, and the blog continues to go from strength to strength, attracting specialist researchers as well as the general public. Emily is now a senior editor at the Planetary Society, where she is also known by the uniquely inspiring title, Planetary Evangelist. In this capacity, she shares the latest news from space explains planetary science to general audiences, and shares awe-inspiring images. She is a contributing editor at Sky and Telescope magazine, and hosts a weekly radio show for the Planetary Society. Emily is a regular commentator on national and international media, and hosts lively discussions on social media. Her work is helping to build a community which connects experts and enthusiastic enthusiasts in informed and productive debate. 
Since 2005, for example, she has been an administrator on the forum unmannedspaceflight.com, where amateur enthusiasts turn the data from space missions into extraordinary images. Emily sets an example in public engagement and communication for the whole scientific community to follow. And she is a particularly inspiring example of women looking to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and maths. Asteroid 274860 is named Emily Lakdawala in recognition of her achievements. The Open University's Planetary and Space Sciences Research Programme is one of its strongest assets. Our contributions to the Rosetta, ExoMars, Cassini-Huygens and other missions puts us at the forefront of the international planetary and space sciences community. Our active research programme also translates into practical benefits on Earth, including the incorporation of our important discoveries into our teaching materials, tuition and wider student engagement. Significantly, our research students play a huge role in the Open University scientific community, both by furthering fundamental science and engaging in its communication. It is our research students, specifically members of the School of Physical Sciences, HUCSOC, who nominated Emily for this honour. It is a pleasure to recognise Emily's work on their behalf. Vice-Chancellor, by the authority of the Senate, I present to you for the honorary degree of Doctor of the University, Emily Lakdawala. Good day, everyone. It's a great privilege to stand before you and accept the degree of Doctor of the University. The Open University's philosophy to provide the opportunity of education to all comers complements my own commitment to making sure that the wonders of space science are available to everyone. The beautiful photos returned from space robots across the solar system are a treasure. It's a treasure that increases in value the more it is shared with diverse people who can be inspired by it. Therefore, I'm especially happy that the idea to nominate me for this honor came from Open University students, and specifically the Hooksock. We may explore the solar system through the eyes of robots, but we remain human. By fostering discussions of the barriers to entry experienced by underrepresented minorities, and by feeding the social and emotional needs of young researchers, organizations like the Hooksock build social scaffolds. This work is every bit as important to the furthering of the human endeavor of science as the gathering and analysis of data. I wish to thank Mr. Horrocks and the Senate of the Open University for this honor. My thanks also go to Rian Chapman of the Hooksock for nominating me. Thanks to the 50,000 members of the Planetary Society for supporting me in my work for the last 16 years. And finally, thanks to my children, one of whom is sitting in the audience today, for inspiring me to see the world with fresh wonder and new questions every day. Vice Chancellor, I shall now present graduates who have gained Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Engineering, and Bachelor of Laws degrees and have been able to attend here today. I present for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with first class honours, Judith Box. Andrew Brown. <laughs> 
Sylvia Delitala. Alice Dovek. Brian Gibson. Rebecca Good. Daniil Govinda. Teddy Halili. Sarah Hyde. <laughs> Kerry Jeffries. <laughs> Claire Jones. Laura Lee King. Karen Levy. Sabrina Loniro. Emma Qureshi. Paul Riley. Ilona Roth. Edward Rumkey. Maxine Sidebottom. Gail Stanley. Andrea Stradling. Lucy Wingrave. <laughs> Abigail Woods. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with Honours, I present Jenna Ackerley. Benjamin Andrews. <laughs> Daniel Aranda Lopez. <laughs> Karen Benham. Muna Bensenusi. <laughs> Martin Bennell Brown. <laughs> Sinead Booth Andrew. Aurelia Brown. Oh. 
Catherine Bryant. Sophie Butterfield. Dylan Cadenhead. Sarah Shikawi. Tajmin Chowdhury. Jenny Clark. Jennifer Clark. Derek Collins. Samantha Cornwall. Anya Cross. Julia Darman. Louise de Mornay. <laughs> Roxana Deacon. <laughs> Alice Downs. Emma Diduck. <laughs> Isabel Four. <laughs> Joanna Fitch. Emma Freeman. <laughs> Ian Gibbs. David Goddard. <laughs> Heather Grant. <laughs> Oliver Gwiliat. Michelle Harris. <laughs> Nicola Harris. <laughs> Ricarda Lee Heath. Gillian Hicks. <laughs> James Higgins. <laughs> 
Sophie Higgins. Toya Hollingshead. Wail Ismail. Christopher Jackson. Katerina Janiskova. <laughs> Paul Jarrett. <laughs> Louise Kenyon. Jackie Curry. <laughs> Kate Leslie. <laughs> Anna Lungo. Matthew Lister. <laughs> Christina Markalenkova. <laughs> Millie Rose Martin. Jenny Mason. <laughs> Wendy Maynard. <laughs> Karen Mead. Jay Meta. <laughs> Anka Moanta. <laughs> Marion Nash. Laura Newton. Denise O'Keefe. Mark Oakes. Kim Osborne. <laughs> Stephanie Osborne. <laughs> Faraha Osman. Lutta Patney. <laughs> Katie Phillips. <laughs> Willow Piper.
Katie Pruitt. Alistair Prime. John Quinn. Bronya Wright. Annie Rezend. <laughs> Karen Richardson. <laughs> Peter Roberts. Sarah Roberts. <laughs> Laura Robinson. <laughs> Claire Rogers. Letizia Sacco. <laughs> Jose Sanchez Salvador. <laughs> Ruth Saville. Caroline Scott. <laughs> Massimiliano Segizzi. <laughs> Ros Simmons. Richard Smith. <laughs> Aurea Steelman. <laughs> Samantha Stevenson. Frank Stratman. <laughs> Margaret Stewart. <laughs> Amanda Sturridge. <laughs> Laszlo Sigilli. Simon Tarry. <laughs> Zena Vadher. <laughs> Judith Vigers. Matthew Walker. <laughs> Julia Wallace.
She now wills coal. <laughs> Bektas Yavus. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts, I present Louise Crosby. Susan Grant. <laughs> Angela Prescott. For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering with honours, I present Natalie Brooks. <laughs> Louis Cabasela Wa Cabasela. <laughs> I present for a degree of Bachelor of Laws with First Class Honours, Michael Linane. <laughs> Catherine Lloyd-Jones. <laughs> Rima Shearman. Ellen Tang. Yay! Alice Wheatley. Yay! For the degree of Bachelor of Laws with Honours, I present Peter Adesanwo. Wayne Baker. Sarah Jane Bingham. Zinzay Bishop. Richard Buck. Ellen Bergon. Constance Chake Ipa. Sylvia Kristovova. Nana Dakoa. <laughs> Dominic Dana. <laughs> Dirk Detty. <laughs> 
Sarah Dutton. Rebecca Eaton Garrett. Dennis Galley. Oliver Head. Rachel Hopkins. Abigail Hugo. Flavia Inzakuru. Jonathan Kilbane. Shoko Madison. Mohamed Nassim. Grace Ocken Reckon. Mercy Oko. Ross, Ross Penny. <laughs> Teresa Reynolds. <laughs> Chelsea Smith. Adam Timby. <laughs> Kayla Tochia. <laughs> Anthony Trigwell. Leander Welsh. Trisha, Trisha Moppet. Emma Matthews. Vice Chancellor, colleagues, graduates, guests, Lopa Patel is one of the most innovative and successful UK entrepreneurs of her generation and is an influential champion of diversity in business, science, and technology. Lopa left school to pursue a BTEC in computer science before reading for a degree in biochemistry and applied molecular biology at the University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology. 
After qualifying, she joined the graduate trainee program at ICI, learning new skills in sales and marketing. She then founded her first business, DMS Direct Limited, specializing in developing database marketing services for corporate clients. As a pioneering digital media entrepreneur, Lopa has established a number of trailblazing websites. She created the lifestyle portal redhotcurry.com, which celebrated the South Asian diaspora through the shared passion for cooking and cricket. She also set up the redhotshop.com, an e-commerce website selling Indian-inspired products and promoting artisan skills. She later founded the news, business and entertainment website newasianpost.com, which showcases untold stories and unheard voices and annually publishes two major lists, the Asian Power Couples Hot 100 and the Top 100 Asian Stars in UK Tech, to highlight the contribution of Britain's ethnic communities. Lopa has been a vocal advocate for the importance and value of diversity in business. She is the founder and CEO of Diversity UK, a charity that promotes inclusion and cultural understanding in Britain through research, advocacy and dialogue. Lopa has been a generous and engaging mentor throughout her career, deeply committed to helping others fulfil their dreams and realise their ambitions. She has a particular interest in attracting women and girls into scientific careers, especially technology. She is an ambassador for STEMnet, going into schools to advise girls and young women, encouraging them to study the sciences and to pursue science-related careers. She is a trustee of the Museum Group and regularly acts as a judge for innovation competitions and creative startup pitches. Lopa has previously served as a non-executive director at Vector, the government agency that aimed to embed technology in learning, and she was one of eight advisors contributing to a review of the BBC Charter in 2016. For five years, Lopa was one of the driving forces behind Sewa Day, a global initiative which draws on Indian traditions of community service and civic engagement to promote volunteering. In 2009, Lopa was awarded an MBE for services to the creative industries. In 2015, she was the first Asian woman to receive the Queen's Award for Enterprise Promotion. This is a select award for business leaders who are recognized as engaging, inspiring, and educating the next generation of entrepreneurs. She was featured in the Sunday Times Maserati 100 Index 2016, a definitive list of Britain's most successful investors, mentors, and entrepreneurs, and in the top 25 of the Smith and Williamson Power 100 earlier this year. Lopa Patel is an outstanding role model who has used her own successes to help pave the way for others. And she is a passionate believer in the importance of giving back. We are delighted to recognize her career achievements, her promotion of diversity and inclusion in science and technology, and her broader contribution to British industry, society, and culture. Vice Chancellor, by the authority of the Senate, I present to you for the honorary degree of Doctor of the University, Lopa Patel. Vice Chancellor, Senate, graduates, ladies and gentlemen, 
I'm deeply humbled and honoured to receive the, this honorary doctorate today, not only for myself, but also for my mother, my daughter, and for all women striving to get a good education. And I'm particularly pleased that there's so many mother and daughters receiving their degrees today. I'm pleased that this has been conferred upon me by my favourite university, the Open University, and with such style. So thank you for those kind words, Karen, and thank you to Juma Johnson for nominating me. 2017 marks the 70th anniversary of the partition of India. And although this was long before my time, it was an era in which my mother grew up. She wanted a degree, but was denied one, because in those days, growing up in a small town in India meant that educating girls was thought to be a waste of time. Education was beyond the reach of most and the preserve of only the very wealthy, so she lost out. My mother made another sacrifice in 1973 when we came to the UK from Kenya, a British colony in Africa. My parents made that decision so that we, my siblings and I, would get a better education in the UK. And we did. Between us, we hold 16 degrees and higher qualification, we run eight businesses, and we employ many, many people. I know that in today's... <laughs> That's very kind of you, and I will relay that to my brothers and sisters so they know. I know that in today's time of high tuition fees, many people question the value of a university education. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's very hard work. And yes, its benefits may not be immediate. But in my personal experience, ignorance is no substitute for actually knowing a thing well, in depth and with breadth. We are in an era of the fourth, fourth industrial revolution building on the third, the digital revolution that has been occurring since the middle of the last century. And this fourth industrial revolution is going to be very unforgiving on those who cannot keep up. The possibilities of billions of people connected by mobile devices with unprecedented processing power, storage capacity, and access to knowledge are unlimited. So why set limits on yourself? As Karen said, I spend a lot of time trying to get girls to study computer science. My BTEC in computer science helped me to lose the fear of computers and machines. You don't need to be good at math or logic or circuitry to understand computers. Think of it as a language. Once you've mastered the basics, the structure of other languages is the same. Nowadays, you don't even know, need to know how to program or code, or in fact, you don't even need a computer. What you need is the knowledge of how to plan and organize things, particularly data. In this information age we currently live in, most ideas exploit data. For example, Uber wouldn't work without GPS data. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't work without Uber. <laughs> the new era that we're living in, or we will be living in, is called, I've heard it called, either the experience age or the machine learning age which is moving beyond just data to incorporate artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and other forms of technology. But one constant remains, and that is us. We are going to have to learn new things and perhaps learn in a different way too. For myself, I have always loved learning new things, and I congratulate all of you graduating today because I know that you also love learning new things. I would like to congratulate the Open University as it approaches its 50th year. I was humbled when you launched TESS India, offering teacher training in a country where my mother struggled and millions of young girls like her still struggle to get an education. And I'm very impressed, Vice-Chancellor, that you have set out your vision to build the Open University into a university of the cloud. But most of all, I admire the Open University because it continues to strive for greater equality, opportunity, and for, the, for social mobility. Inequality is an issue that needs to be addressed and tackled urgently and decisively. And so I am very glad that the Open University is there, a long established, practical, useful, and far-reaching resource to help us do just that. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Vice-Chancellor, continuing the presentation of graduates, I shall now present those who have gained Bachelor of Science degrees, Foundation degrees, and Diplomas of Higher Education, and have been able to attend here today. The full subject details are printed in the insert within the ceremony program. I present for the degree of Bachelor of Science with first-class honours, James Arrowsmith. <laughs> Rose Bonner. <laughs> Richard Bull. <laughs> Sarah Clark. Mauro De Gennaro. <laughs> Angelica De Gregorio. <laughs> Rob Ferguson. <laughs> Hamish Gammon. Dave Marsden. Mark O'Neill. Rebecca Rose. Michael Walker. <laughs> Hannah Wolf. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Science with honours, I present Shane Adicote. Lucilia Albuquerque. <laughs> Rumina Ali Qureshi. <laughs> Nasira Baidi. Andrew Burkett. <laughs> Julia Bozzelli. <laughs> Natalie Blackford. <laughs> Rebecca Blackstone. Paula Breslick. <laughs> Michael Butcher. <laughs> Tatiana Chakirova. <laughs> Debbie Cohen. Sarah Colclough. Yeah. 
Alexander Cornford. Duncan Crosby. James Dainty. Tizetilina Dalau. Shiria Darudi. Alessio Diana. Alison Dobson. <laughs> Leslie Doherty. <laughs> Lucy Dolbear. <laughs> Philip Donaldson. Anna Donoski. Amanda Edwards. Zach Evans. Sudabe Farah Obadi. Christopher Findlay. <laughs> Alicia Francois George. <laughs> Joanne Gambrell. Ivaldas Grigaitis. <laughs> Ali Habasha. <laughs> Louise Hatchett. <laughs> Matthew Haynes. Emily Hildalgo. <laughs> Alistair Hill. <laughs> Angela Hodgkinson York. <laughs> Ruth Humphrey. Rachel Karsh. <laughs> Gafaria Khan. <laughs> Evelina Kost Fellman. Christine Lau. <laughs> Michelle Loebscher. <laughs> Paul Madigan. Sarah Matheson. Yeah. 
James Maynard. <laughs> Stuart McLaughlin. <laughs> Michelle McLaughlin. <laughs> Zara Mirali. Nigel Mayer. <laughs> Judith Mile. <laughs> Tracy Moles. Faith Muir. <laughs> Jody Newland. <laughs> Lisa Norman. Anarita Nunez. <laughs> Tamla Niak Kudya. <laughs> Mary Ann O'Connor. Melanie Oakley. <laughs> Jacob Olani Peckham. <laughs> Johan Olivier. Chikate Osler. <laughs> Stephanie Parker. <laughs> Zidenka Petrovova. Danielle Daniel Phillips. <laughs> Natasha Roan Parkinson. Paul Richardson. Helen Richardson Walsh. John Rogers. Ithia San Jose Mateo. Unity Sandasi. <laughs> Thomas Smeaton. <laughs> Dacilia Soles.
Stephen Spreadbridge. Julie, Julia Stevens. Chris Townhill. Carmen Turner. Claire Vivian. <laughs> Sally Williams. <laughs> Melissa Woolley. Sophie Young. For the degree of Bachelor of Science, I present Kay Bray. Joanne Brown. <laughs> Ivana Chung. <laughs> Heidi Freeman. Georgina Leeper. <laughs> Louise Young. <laughs> Kyle Passad. Paul Sheraton. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing Practice with Honours, I present Emily Burnham. For a, for a foundation degree, I present Rashda Awang. Julie Eve. <laughs> Lee Friend. <laughs> Jackie Halsey. <laughs> Shazia Mogul. Lloyd Moore. <laughs> Frank Neves. <laughs> S 
Sarah O'Brien. <laughs> Philippa Owen. <laughs> Neil Petty. Chudian Anglin. <laughs> Linda Thornton Hunt. Karen Walker. <laughs> Maria Williams. <laughs> For a diploma of higher education, I present Michelle Dean. Aisha Dockery. <laughs> Ashley Dunn. <laughs> Yahaya Kiingi. Anu Okanul. <laughs> Kathleen Wadelow. <laughs> I present to you, for the degree of Bachelor of Science with Honours, John Spence. <laughs> Some handshakes. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, guests, members of Senate, and of course, our wonderful graduates. I could just see from, I, I think I've never seen so many extraordinary, happy, smiling faces. And just one or, one or two tears as well, were tears of joy, joy and relief. I've hardly ever seen a ceremony where people we're so delighted. It's been a special day for you, and I hope one that you will remember for the rest of your lives. I wish I... I just want to tell you a little bit about the few conversations I was able to have with people. Um, 
I wish, I wish almost that there was a, a video of it because nothing could act as a better advertisement for our university. I heard about people who come in from different parts of the world. Someone had flown in through, from Vienna. I heard about a son who flew in specially to be here for his dad's ceremony who flew in from New York. I heard about a lady who was using the studying that she's been doing to help the Water Aid charity in Somaliland. I heard about the different things that had happened during people's study. Someone had, had two children. Someone else told me they'd had an MBE during their study. And a lady had told me that she'd had two new knees and a broken back, and she'd, carried, and she'd carried on studying. Many people, I won't go into all the details, who had different kind of health conditions and disabilities. Someone who'd been in hospital for, for, for many years. Other kinds, other kinds of conditions. And so many people said how appreciative they were for the way that the university had helped them. And different people telling me how long they'd studied. I had seven and a half years, I had nine years, I had 10 years, but then I had 20 years, 20 years of study. And one of the most moving moments, someone who told me that 30 years ago, they'd been told by their teachers that they'd never achieve anything, they'd never be anyone. And 30 years later, that person got their qualification today. That's what the Open University can do for people. So those wonderful, inspiring stories of those individuals. But I truly believe that everyone who's just received a qualification here is extraordinary. But together, you're even more extraordinary. In fact, I believe you're the most amazing body of graduates anywhere in this country. In fact, today, you're probably in a single room with the most amazing people you'll ever be together with in your life. Now, for your family and friends and supporters, they all know the amazing efforts that you went to individually to get your qualification. But many of you, because Open University students don't come together in large numbers that, that often, won't know much about each other, and your families won't. So I'd like just to spend a couple of minutes just showing everyone how extraordinary you are, and in particular, the amazing things that you have to do along, alongside your studies. So I'd just like to ask a few questions, and if you can put up your hands. Um, was anyone in work or doing voluntary work at some stage during their study? Look at that. Was there any, were any parents who helped to bring up a family during their study? <laughs> and anyone who was a carer looking, for other looking after other people in their family or other dependents during their study? <laughs> so as you, as you saw from those show of hands, almost every student here has needed to fulfill some other obligation alongside their study. Now compare that with the wonderful but regular universities where extra juices for students might only extend to the sports team or maybe a particular commitment to the student's bar. <laughs> Your efforts are so much greater. And let me share a little frustration I have over the words that are sometimes used to describe open university students. You're described as, as part-time students. Part-time, part-time, it's more like double time with the OU, isn't it? But there's only one thing tougher than being an OU student. Yeah, it's living with an OU student. <laughs> so I think we should turn the tables and take a moment for the graduates to acknowledge the support of your family and friends. Let's thank them for standing by you. So graduates, please stand look towards your friends and family and give them a massive round of applause.
Thank you. Thank you. I think we can tell the degree of family support, can't we, from all the cheering that we heard. It almost got slightly out of hand there, that competition, but you're clearly a very vo vocal lot. But I think we should also thank another really important group, the OU's wonderful ac academics, represented by the staff here on the stage. Let's please thank all of your tutors and academics. Thank you very much for that. You're all so special, but you're all so special because of the university that you've now graduated from and the standards that we set. Standards that we know that employers, for instance, really respect. Over 1,300 employers regularly invest in our courses, and a recent survey found that employers perceive part-time students to be hardworking, committed, and requiring discipline. I'm sure you'd share that. So your OU qualification is something to be intensely proud of that's well recognized and respected. So if you're looking for a promotion or a career move, I hope that you can use that to explain how an OU degree really, really counts. Just a few more things about this, this university which I hope you'll be able to pass on to other people. We do wonderful work with those who need our help most. Earlier this month, the OU's English in Action project won a prestigious Pioneer Award. This was a brilliant 10-year project changing the way that children and young people learn English in Bangladesh. Many of you will be familiar with our partnership with the BBC, so whenever you see the Open University crest at the end of a television programme, you can be sure there'll be something extra to learn that we provide for the whole country. And let me just turn to the research of the Open University. When we took part in the uh, most recent research assessment exercise, that showed that nearly three quarters of the OU's research was marked as either world-leading or internationally excellent. And let me just give you one example that comes to mind from recent events of the great research that the Open University has been involved in. You may have seen about the controlled crashing into Saturn of the Cassini space probe. And the Cassini Huygens mission transformed our understanding of that second largest planet in the solar system. I must be careful to get my science right here, mustn't I? Um, but Huygens was the, was the lander that landed on the moon Titan, um, I think about 12 years ago. And the OU helped to put together some of the scientific instrumentation when that lander landed on that moon and sent back amazing information that gave us the first understanding of that extraordinary largest moon of, of Saturn. So, when you look up in the sky, and if you know where Saturn is, just think, there's a little bit of your university sitting on that moon, which Open University brain power helped take there. So you're a member of a university that's a world leader in technology and innovation. And from now on, you'll always be a member of our movement of millions with a mission of one. Of a university that believes where you start in life should not limit where you get to. You join a community of OU alumni around the world and will continue to be by your side in your lifelong journey. The motto, our motto on the crest behind me is learn and live. Something that all OU graduates embody as you step back into your busy lives. Continue to learn and live. You've shown your great skills and ability and be confident that you can change the world around you for the better. Join in our alumni careers group, for instance, on LinkedIn to share your professional experience and make connections and maybe try some of our courses on Open Learn and Future Learn. And maybe, maybe when you've had a little bit of a time to recover, maybe even think about coming back to the OU and studying another course. I know that some people already told me that they're about to start some, their masters. And our alumni, alumni team are out in the foyer, so do talk to them about the activities of the Alumni Association. And join in our campaign for the 50th anniversary of the university, the Open Up the Future campaign, helping us to open up opportunity and lives for many more people. Because when you leave today, 
you become an ambassador for the Open University and what it stands for. Tell people about your own journey. You may have seen some of our television adverts that bring to life the trials and tribulations and jubilation of being an OU student. But we know that for potential students of the university, a word of recommendation from one of you is far better than any commercial. You are our best advert, and your pride in your university is something that matters hugely. In a moment, the proceedings will end and the ceremonial party will process out. Please do join me and the rest of the processing party outside in the auditorium so we can congratulate you in person. But before we process, I think there's just one last thing we should do. Can the graduates please stand for one last huge round of applause? Proceedings of this degree ceremony have been completed, and I now declare this meeting of congregation closed. Would all those who are able to stand please do so?
Thank you.